clapping, go ahead. Put those hands together to the Holy Spirit. What an amazing, what an amazing love of God we have as partakers of His divine nature and that that He has done for us. Just go ahead and worship Him right now. Just wave those hands to Him. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Just tell Him how wonderful He is and how glorious He is. Tell Him how much you love Him. Tell Him how much you love Him. Tell Him how much you love Him. Glorious God, glorious God, we give you praise. Your love is amazing, Lord. In all I do, I honor you. In all I do. I honor you. Lord, in all we do today, we honor you, O oh Lord, as the Alpha and Omega of our lives. You are the beginning, O oh Lord, and the end. The ancients of days, the bright and the morning star. Come on, somebody worship him. Don't, don't get tired right now. Don't get tired. Just give him praise. Give him praise, Lord. Give him praise, Jesus. For there is no higher calling. No greater honor than to stand. I kneel before your throne, sing out my name at your prayer. And praise by your glory, O oh God. I need to worship you. down at our feet, O oh Lord. Even on our knees today, we say how amazing you are. How glorious you are. I feel your presence, O oh Lord, in this house this morning. Let your glory overshadow us this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
hand of God so strong right now in this auditorium wherever you are if there is anything you would ever want the Lord to do for you just place that need right now before him open your mouth and begin to declare and just begin to request make those requests known unto unto the lord right now the presence of god is here thank you lord i feel the unction oh lord in this house Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Grace, 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 grace. You say, as we speak into your ears, so shall you do for us. Oh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jump those hands together wherever you are, even as you take your seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to really appreciate the Lord for his goodness and that that he has done could you turn to your left and turn to your right and give your neighbor a smile and say you're welcome to church please make sure you're turning to left or your right and say you're welcome to church hallelujah if your neighbor is not turning please help me shake your neighbor and check if your neighbor is still here with us amen <laughs> hallelujah i want to really give god praise today is an amazing day in the presence of god are you excited are you happy then make a joyful noise hallelujah you know what hold on hold on hold on hold on you know what you know I'm going to give us one minute to shake up the place and celebrate the presence of God. You can shake up the place, misbehave in the presence of God. One minute approval. Amen. Get up and give God a praise and a shout of thanksgiving. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Give him praise. Just shout. 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 Give him a shout of thanks and praise. Hey, Kabbalado Shataga. The Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's, that's good. We are in God's sanctuary. You may be seated. Praise God. We are in sanctuary. We are not in mortuary. Amen. So when you are in the presence of your father, just celebrate that goodness, that great thing that he has done. Hallelujah. May we bow our heads. Father in heaven, I humble myself, O oh Lord, before you. I come, O oh Lord, with all humility. Lord, even as I'm about to share your word. I ask, O oh Lord, that you use this lips of clear of mine to speak not my word, but your word. I ask, O oh Lord, that you minister to your people and touch a soul, touch your hearts. I pray, O oh Lord Jehovah, that this whole house will be electrified by your presence and your power. That, O oh Lord, my voice will not be heard, but thy voice will be heard. 
Lord, I decree that you might increase in this house. Take your place, O oh Lord. Induce me with your Holy Ghost and power that I will divide and rightfully asunder the word and clearly demystify the mysteries behind the word. And I say, after this time, I'm going to give you all glory and all honor. For your glory, you will share with no man. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And the saints shall say, amen. And amen. Praise God. I want to really start by really appreciating those of us worshiping with us for the first time. God bless you, Ray Good. We are really, really grateful to see you worship with us in person. Praise God. It's a, it's a, it's a great one. God bless you, my brother. Amen. God, thank you for coming. Hallelujah. And we really, really, as a church, appreciate this um, kindness to spend time with us. In the house today praise god today i'm going to be speaking on the topic of caption partakers of his divine nature hallelujah partakers of his divine nature i believe you are with your writing materials like i always say that the shortest pencil is better than the longest what good student amen You know, I've come to have this question thrown to me many times, even as a pastor, that how can I be a better Christian? And you know, the meaning of, a, of, of Christianity is Christ's followers. How can I be a better Christian? You know, many times the gospel of Jesus Christ has been misinterpreted preached in a way that many believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is gospel of condemnation whereas the gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of love and acceptance praise God it is not a gospel of condemnation so questions has been thrown to me by believers old believers and young believers alike that what does it really mean to be a good believer what does it really mean to have the nature of god in you when you hear the word a godly man what does that mean when you hear the word a godly woman what does that mean does it mean that you are most righteous does it mean that you are classified as a high class righteous believer in the house no as a matter of fact, our righteousness is the righteousness of Christ. Praise God. If God was to judge every one of us by our standards and by our deeds, every man will be found wanting. But the death of Jesus Christ has given us hope, opening up the doors to us. That his righteousness has now become our own righteousness from the moment we accept christ into our lives as our lord and personal savior our righteousness does not matter it's his righteousness that covers every one of us that's why we can come boldly to the throne of grace the bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain for yourself mercy what a wonderful god praise god so the partakers of his divine nature and i want to just into uh, like define something here very fast so you will understand so i'm going to be moving a little bit fast so bear with me what does divine nature really means in one sense we already possess a measure of divine or godly nature you believe that praise god we define and we, we we actually possess a, a measure of it since all human male and female are created in god's image what is divine divine is something that is not part of the human atmosphere 
not part of the human world is divine which means it is not something that you and i created it's something that comes from above am i communicating so the nature of god if the book of genesis is actually accurate we have to believe in it we have to also believe that the nature of god is inside of us because the bible said we were created in his express image am i communicating with somebody so each is a beloved son or daughter of heaven of our heavenly father praise god as such each has a divine nature and destiny genesis chapter 1 verse 27 genesis chapter 1 verse 27 as such we all we have that divine nature because you know as your biological father gave birth to you there are genes of your father inside of you am i communicating good so that gene is the nature of your father hallelujah that gene is what you can say that okay i i i i have a connection with my father that's why when a man says that he's not a father of a baby they run a scan they do a test pathology praise god they run the pathology test that test tells of where the child is coming from if the child indeed is connected to the man so that particular connection is the nature of the man that is being transferred to that child so but in the divine nature of god in the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 27 the bible says so god created man in his own image so we are not actually apes or animals as science say that we evolution took place and we moved from one level to another and we became who we are you know sometimes when science goes in to explain spiritual things they make a mess of themselves praise god the spiritual things can only be explained by the man of the spirit If you are a person of the spirit, you will be able to understand and to explain deeper revelations of the things of the spirit. Because the things of the spirit to the man of the flesh is stupidity. It doesn't make sense. So if God created man, it simply means that man has the nature of God inside of him. And when you read the, the fall of man, you would notice that something happened. When Adam sinned against God and took the fruit and ate of that fruit, the Bible said even before that time, God said to Adam and Eve that the day you eat of this fruit, that day you shall surely die. When they ate of that fruit, they never died a physical death, but they died a spiritual death. What is that? They died a death of the nature of God left them. Am I complicated with somebody? The nature of God left them simply means that they became just an ordinary being. And I thank God for Jesus Christ. Praise God. The Bible says he came as a second Adam to restore that which the first Adam has lost. And what was that? We call it relationship with God, but the actual sense is to restore back the nature of God, that divine nature of God back to man. So we can be able to have the access to cry, Abba Father. Am I communicating with somebody? Through the atonement of Christ, we can ultimately become like our heavenly father if we accept jesus as our lord and savior john chapter 1 verse 12 if we accept him as our lord and savior through the atonement christ had to die for you and i had to atone for our sins through that atonement we have that access now to cry out our father but as many as received him to them gave he what power to them gave you what? To them gave you what? Dunamis. To become the sons of God. Even to them that believe in his name. So you need the power of God to be able to stand boldly and cry, Abba Father. 
so the only thing the first access is to accept jesus as your lord and personal savior can i get you amen so to become more like him means to take on his nature that's the question i said many have been asking oh how how can i how can i be like christ praise god the bible says he called you and i brethren jesus called us brethren praise god so which means jesus is not seeing us as outsiders he's seeing us as those that are part of him and part of the kingdom praise god so sometimes many believers they get themselves so choked by getting so confused When you wake up in the morning, you are listening to Pastor A. And by afternoon, you switch to Pastor B. By midnight, you are listening to Pastor D. You are like a person that is mixing cheese and banana. And later on, you will not take combination of blended egg and something like milk. Put it together then you should know that your best friend will be the loo praise god for i sent forth my word and the word that i sent he let the people it is the word of god that deals with anything that is anti-redemption inside of you Paul was speaking. He said, Be ye transformed through the, through the renewal of your mind until the mind of a person is renewed. That person will make no headway. Poverty is a thing of the mind. Nobody is born poor. When Jesus said, The poor you will have always, did he put your name there? You know, sometimes it does, some people say, oh, you know, we are poor. Because Jesus said the poor will always be here on earth. You know, they will always be around. Was your name written? Even though your name is Paulinus, is Paulinus poverty. Praise God. What you accept is what works with you. The moment you tell yourself and say, no more, everything stops. Am I communicating with somebody? The Bible said on that beautiful day, the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep. And God saw that the whole earth was filled with darkness. The Bible said, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke. God spoke to the Spirit. He said, let there be light. Which means he said, no more darkness. He said, let there be light. And the Bible said, there was light. It simply means that God knows that he has the audacity to change things. And you can't change things if you don't have the nature of God inside of you. A son of a king is a prince. Am I right? When the father passes on, he becomes who? Simple. He's in the DNA. You can't take away from somebody that is... You, you, can't, you can't just take it away from a person that is born into a royal family. That word royalty is in their DNA. They may look poor, but one day the royalty will speak. I see you be celebrated in the name of Jesus. That amen is too, too low. I say, I see you celebrated in the name of Jesus. When you have this nature of God in you, you become bold even as a lion. Your father cannot be the lion of the tribe of Judah and you are busy moving around like the goats of the community. Hello, that is not, that does not connect. If your father is the lion, you ought to roar also like the lion. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says the more we focus on him, the more we be like him. So the only way to, to have that connection with God the only way to speak like your father, the only way to act like your father is to focus your eyes on him. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes up to the hills. He said, from where is coming my help? He said, my help coming from the Lord God which made the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse number 14. Romans 8, 
verse number 14. Hallelujah. Are you there? Okay, let's go. For as many as are led. You know, I tell people, I like, say, when you make statements like something told me, is an insult to the Holy Spirit. To refer to the Holy Spirit as something. The Holy Spirit is a person. Am I communicating with somebody? Is a person. And the reason why you are finding it difficult to connect with him is because you've been relating with him as something. You are not relating with him as a personality. And for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, he said, they are the sons of a Elion. Now, what is, what, is, what is the spirit there? Praise God. What is the lead and what's the spirit? The connection to that is the nature of God in you. As many as are led by the spirit. For you to be led by the spirit is a sign that the nature of God is resident inside of you. And you are operating on that frequency. No wonder some of us we speak things as though we are actually there in the day of creation. We say things that the human understanding and the capability of the human mind cannot handle. Why? Because you are not operating based on this frequency. You are operating from the frequency from above which is the divine nature of God. My communicator with somebody. So how then shall we attain this nature? How then shall we get to this place of the divine nature of God? How then shall we say that, okay, yes, I am operating in this nature. And what are those things that could make you not to operate in this nature or not to not to not to flow in this dimension i tell you when you operate in the nature of god you will not you will you you will find it very difficult to hate am i communicating with somebody you didn't get me the reason why you are finding it difficult to forgive is because you don't have the nature of god inside of you Oh, this person offended me. I will never. Some of us we have diaries of offense. <laughs> Diary, like from 1967. You've been writing. Uh, June 26, 2009. Mm hmm. So, I was insulted by Sister A. And from this day, this day, this day, I will never forget. And you sign it. Put the date. Wonderful. <laughs> so, you become the bank of offense. Do you know that you will kill yourself very soon? You know what it means to carry one person alone in your heart? And when they take your diary, you have over 500. No wonder you are having high blood pressure. No wonder your heartbeat is pumping at a rate that even doctors are surprised. Let me tell you, life can be easy and sweet if you learn to let go. The reason why we, we are having so much challenges around us is because we don't want to let go. What your father did to you 20 years ago, what your sister did to you, what your brother did to you, what, this, what that brother, what that sister, what that friend did to you, you are still having it. Do you know that some of us, by the time we see the individual face to face, 
we become as offended as when it happened that's not the nature of God so pastor what do you mean how are we going to do it forgive people in advance listen the Bible said that as long as you are here on this planet earth offense must come you must offend me and I must offend you if we don't offend each other then we are not human beings the reason why we have to offend each other because we are putting on this flesh and we are free beings that have the, 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 the power to have our thoughts and our mindset and flow in a way that we choose Offense is very dangerous. When I studied about offense in the Bible, I found out that one can commit suicide through just having offense. Just being offended alone could lead one to suicide. The Bible says that John the Baptist, even after baptizing Christ, he knew that that is the Messiah nobody introduced christ to him he was the one that introduced jesus to the community he was the one that said behold the lamb of god john chapter 1 behold the lamb of god that has come to take away the sins of the world he was the one that baptized jesus and asked everybody to say this is that man and the, before his eyes and the eyes of everybody the heavens open and everybody heard the voice that says this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased what a powerful encounter and down the line this same john the baptist because he had a little bit challenge a little bit problem he was arrested was detained and he was waiting for Jesus, I believe, to come get him out. And maybe Jesus was delaying. And he sent his disciples. I said, go and ask my cousin, because the both of them are cousins. Go and ask him if he is the one indeed we have been waiting for. Or we should wait for another to come. And when the disciples went to Jesus... And they said to Jesus, I said, this is what John has said, we should come and ask you. You know what Jesus said to them? He said, go and tell John that the blind, they receive their sight. The lame, they walk. The dead are received back to life. He said to him, he said to, to, to them to tell him, he said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. And the next verse that followed was the head of John beheaded. John was beheaded. He lost his head because of doubt and offense. In the nature of God, do not allow offense to last inside of you. As humans, we, are, we can get angry. But the Bible says, do not let your anger stay with the going down of the sun. Am I communicating with somebody? Live a life void of offense. When people are bitter with you, laugh your way and go and enjoy yourself. Let me tell you, not everybody will love you and not everybody will hate you. <laughs> As people are hating you, there are people also loving you. As people are loving you also, there are people also that are hating you. Haters must be in your life. You can't kill all of them. Stop doing midnight prayers. They must be there. Oh God, kill all my enemies. If God killed them, who would charge you to your breakthrough? <laughs> Let them not survive. Ah. You know, many years ago, 
I was praying ignorant prayers. Father, let none of my enemies leave in the name of Jesus. Let every one of them die by fire. I can imagine God folds his hand and I say, you don't mean it, really? Now watch. If there was no Goliath, how would David manifest? If there was no Pharaoh, there wouldn't have been any need for Moses. Every time you see resistance, God is about to take you to a greater height. Every time you experience a Pharaoh, don't bother yourself about the Pharaoh. Just ask God for the staff that kills Pharaoh. When God gives you that staff of authority, you know that you will cross that Red Sea and nothing is going to happen to you. Pharaoh is there. Do you know, do you know something? Can I bring something to your, to, to your light? Now listen. You remember the story of Moses and Pharaoh, the children of Israel, when they got to the Red Sea. But do you know that if not because Pharaoh and his sole army was, were charging to the children of Israel, they wouldn't have crossed that Red Sea. They would have remained there. The breakthrough you are praying for, all you need is one devil that will make you pray very well and you get there. I tell you. Moses wouldn't have known what to do because even while the Pharaoh army were charging to them, the Bible said Moses turned to them out of out of pressure and said to the people say stand still and see the salvation of the lord and god said no to moses tell the people to move forward your breakthrough can only come the more you go close the more it opens but if you're standing where you are making excuses for yourself the bible said that he that observeth the the, the the clouds, the weather shall not sow. He said to them, no, 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 no. Move forward. Did God split the Red Sea? No, it's the fate of the people. As they marched forward, the Red Sea opened. So what would split the Red Sea has always been inside of them. They never knew. After today, the Lord will open your understanding. That amen is poor. Amen. Do you know that the staff that would deliver the children of Israel, God never sent it from heaven. It was in the hand of Moses all this while. When you have the nature of God, you will not be confused. The nature of God enables your spirit to be in light, in pari pursuit with the spirit of God you're walking in the light of God even if you meet challenges challenges must come there will be there will be challenges in this life that must come to you it is only those that have the spirit of God in them that overcome so how do we get there to build up our nature as divine partakers in the house of the Lord and in the body of Christ. Praise God. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2, then to 9. Second Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 2, then to 9. Praise God. Are you there? Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and what? And what? Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue praise God verse number four everybody want to go 
Come on, everybody want to go. Whereby are given unto us, that's you and I, praise God, are you there? Exceeded great and precious promises that by these, by these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. There is a nature that is not of your biological father or mother. There is a nature that you need to put up. So you'll be able to stand in these days. That will be the particles of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Praise God. Verse number five. Verse number five. And beside this, he said what? One of the steps you have to understand is what? He said, beside this, give all diligence, add to your faith. What? Virtue. Praise God. All diligence. All diligence. You got to be conscious of it. Stop behaving or living your life as a believer as anything the money gives to you, you take it that way. No. You have to be conscious of the fact that Christ in you is the hope of glory. So the first thing is that you have to be a diligent person. Praise God. Give me the amplifier of this. Give me the amplifier. Let's, let's look at something from the amplifier version. We're in verse 5, right? For this very reason, applying your diligence... So the divine promises make every effort it is not pastor pastor every day you make efforts too if you rely on pastor's prayer even pastor too is looking for prayers hello i am not jesus on the cross I am sent to bear witness of the cross. Am I communicating? You, as a believer in the house, you have to build your faith consciously. In exercising your faith to develop moral excellence, moral excellence you want to know how the nature of god is like or what it should be moral excellence the ability to understand that you must live a moral life maintain a state of consistency in building your moral standing is God the next is what talk to me church the next is what praise God exercising your faith praise God so we're in verse 5 right to define promises make every effort in exercising your faith to developing moral excellence and in moral excellence knowledge that knowledge talks about insight, understanding. Because if you don't understand your father, how would you relate with him? And how can you understand him better when you don't study his word? Adding to moral excellence, he said, look at knowledge. Praise God. Insight, understanding. Verse number six. And in your knowledge, self controls. You know, one of the things in the body of Christ that we have to keep praying to God to grow 
in it very well is self-control everybody say it after me say self-control say it one more time say it again self-control the ability to deny yourself of instant action and also gratifications you are you are not acting because you feel like you have the audacious audacity to act like as i am a little baby of four years comes to me and say i will throw you on the ground it is it is only it is only when i don't have self-control over myself that i would now say oh i'm going into a fight with a child of four years old praise god it is only when i don't have ability to hold myself back that i will go into a battle with someone i know that if i throw my weight on them definitely something wrong is going to take place so the self-control in me the nature of god speaks that you're driving on the 401 and driving 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 the next thing you know some people can be very funny on the highway and someone cuts in front of you in a way and manner that you don't like some of us we cut, cut, cut. you're changing your gear you want to you want, hey calm down and before you know it two of you will be cutting into yourselves you'll be breaking in front of him that's not the nature of god when you allow certain things to just go not everything as a child of god you should be you should give response back you must you talk you know some of us need to ask the holy spirit to give us big padlock let him just padlock our mouths because some of us our mouth can can end this whole universe somebody gives you the middle finger and you are so angry to the extent that you're looking for more than the middle finger to give back <laughs> hallelujah now we are looking at the details of the nations right you got to build 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 that that nature of god self-control next one day is steadfastness steadfastness and the next is say and in your steadfastness godliness 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 here does not connote righteousness because that's what many of us will believe that it is godliness here is translated to be living a kind lifestyle that could be attributed to christ-like lifestyle godliness the word godliness covers everything we are talking about from the from the head down to the toe it simply means that the way you respond to people simply means how you talk to people even when people are offended in you you're so quiet when people came to jesus and harassed jesus and said a whole lot of stuff jesus just kept quiet speaks only one word at a time with wisdom have you ever heard someone say oh i i like this person so much and when they say why say ah, this person is really christ's example the christ-like lifestyle that is the godliness hallelujah i pray that the lord will open your eyes to greater understanding in the name of jesus when you have that godliness in you your appearance alone will win a whole lot of presence 
people love you you know why because the glory of god radiates around your life that's when you have that godly appearance when you talk in a godly way when you act in a godly way when you respond in a godly way when you make decisions in a godly way so everything you do you connect it back to the things of God and in your godliness brotherly affection be kind to people be nice to them if you notice a brother is hungry don't go and preach the gospel to him you know don't give the gospel to somebody that needs food give the person food to eat first then you now give the gospel many years ago back then when we were young believers there are some brothers in the church very funny brothers when you come to their house and they want to eat immediately you knock the door they will just take their food and hide it under under the seat and pretend like there is no food in the house <laughs> And when you when you come in, brother Cosmos, they say, ah, life is very difficult. They use their they use their mouth to curse themselves. That is not brotherly affection. I've seen people that give what they don't even have just to satisfy others. I've seen people that give their last and go hungry. I've seen a man that the wife cost him out so much because he gave out the school fees of their own child to this other family so they could send their own child to school I know everyone will say yes but he's stupid for doing that maybe that other family never had opportunity to say they will recover back as much as he had an opportunity so those are the things you contracts don't just say I don't have no everybody have something are you with me and in your brotherly affection which is um, developed Christian love that is learned to unselfishly seek the best for others and to do the things for their benefit verse number eight for as these qualities are yours and are increasing in you as you grow towards spiritual maturity they will keep you from what my god so it's possible for some believers to be useless it's not me that said it to this my name will come out in cp24 tomorrow morning i didn't say believers are useless but he say if you keep this whole actions which is remember the nature of god he said it will make you as a believer to be void of being useless god forbid hallelujah and and, and it says <laughs> and unproductive in regards to the true knowledge and greater understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, For whoever lacks these things, or these qualities rather, is blind. No wonder sometimes when you're talking to some believers, the way they are answering and replying you, they talk like they are not having understanding because they are blind. A true believer that have the nature of Christ inside of them to be a giver will not be a problem to, to be a tighter will not be a problem you can't say you love God when you are not practically 
allowing the nature of God to take over your whole life remember the scripture says that as you continue in this towards your perfection so which means we are being made, we are not yet perfect we are being made perfect so you must consciously put these things into perspective that's why no man can come before you and say I'm perfect but we are thriving to master those things that have gained masteries over us oh my god I, I love this I love it give me give me the verse 9 in, in verse 8 and 9 in King James please verse 8 and 9 in King James praise God he said for if these things the word if is conditional if this that's why some of us we don't progress we don't go further in life he said for if these things be in you and abound in you they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the epignosis of our Lord Jesus Christ you will not be buried. How can you be going to church and you got in the bus from Eglinton and somebody made you angry? The person is tempting you and pushing you and say, I will beat you here right now. I say, you beat me. I say, yes. I say, okay, hold on. It seems like this Bible I'm holding is deceiving you. And when you got down from the bus, you dropped the Bible. I say, brother, you took off your tie. Fold your sleep. You just say, see, I will beat you today. When I finish beating you, I will pick up my Bible back and dress up as a brother and go to church. Wonderful. Praise God. If these things they be in you in increasing measure, they make you so that you will not never be barren nor unfruitful. These are the two things that everybody needs in life. Be a fruitful man and pray never to, a, to be a barren woman. You know, when you talk about barrenness, many believe that it's only women that can be barren. A man can be barren too. Your pocket can be barren. Barrenness is a, is a word that is used for something that is not able to be fruitful. So you can never be barren or unfruitful. Whatever you do, you'll be fruitful. Whatever you do, you'll be succeeding. So when people ask you and say, how come you are succeeding more than every other person? Tell them, no, it's simply because I have the nature of God inside of me. That's all. This whole thing I've been talking about is just have the nature of God inside of you and that's it. You won't struggle to do the right things. Verse number nine. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Is blind and cannot see afar off. If you ask me now that what's the fate of this ministry in the next five years, I would tablet it one after the other. When we started up this ministry, those of us that started with us, didn't I tell you everything I told you? Are you not seeing them happening? I told you all that this is what is going to take place from this phase to this phase to that phase to that phase. Everything is taking place. I am, I am not running ahead of God. You know why? I am following God because the nature of God is inside of me. So I don't find it difficult to adjust and follow God. You just know it. So I would say, oh, how can you tell? Yes, you are asking the question, how can you tell? Because you're a man of the flesh. In the realm of the spirit, there is no time. There is no space. Everything is there. So if you are the man of the spirit, you should be able to see in the realm of the spirit what is to come and how it will look like. The glorious days of this ministry is, is, is yet to come. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. 
and i want to announce to you also that the your glorious days are yet to come you've not seen nothing yet you haven't seen anything don't just look at the 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 three bedroom apartments that you all the condo that you have you bought with your money or maybe the house you succeeded in buying i say oh now i have run the race and i've finished my course praise god because in this country that's one of the things i hear everybody's raising to buy a house and they believe that when they buy a house they are, they are they are successful that doesn't make you a successful person that house can be can get bombed and go down that doesn't make you a successful person so don't live your life and limit yourself how about you have a dream of being one of the youngest millionaires in the city how about you have a dream even at the age of 60 something at the age of 50 something you are still thriving that you're going to hit that mark how about you not just giving up on yourself god never gave up on man even when man failed and man fell god still sought a way out to bring man back and i'm glad that we are back to god I might communicate with somebody I'm glad that you and I we are back to God praise God and the Bible says that and had forgotten and this kind of people they've forgotten that they were purged from their old sins from their past lifestyles when you build this consciousness in you all you need is to get up in the morning and speak good about your life and speak great things about yourself and you head on and i tell you nothing will ever stop you in life you will see resistance you will you will come you will have confrontations but in all god will give you victory god will give you victory don't give up yet it is not yet over until it's over and you know what we serve a god our god is a referee when the devil have you down god won't count there will be no count but the moment you rise up and you put the devil down god will give you the count am i communicating with somebody i see favor happening for you in the name of jesus i speak for greater heights in your life in the name of jesus if that amen is stronger in your mouth may you receive it in jesus name I see mighty tongue around in your life and everything that has to do with you. Just the nature of Christ alone. This was the mystery that Paul discovered. And that was why when Paul preached about the nature of Jesus Christ, it was like he was present when Christ was present. Why? Because he sought deep. He was a man of revelation. Deep understanding. What you give attention to you will command attraction in that dimension if you give attention to the word of god you will command attraction if you give attention to the things that you are doing give attention diligent attention to what you're doing and before you know it you you you, you will be celebrated by the world an athlete that doesn't doesn't run around here and there once in a while run around cannot be celebrated praise God you have to you have you have to keep moving keep managing yourself consistency because I know and I tell you today that consistency in life is the bedrock for every success you want to be successful you want to make it don't live your life based on the opinion of the poor because every man has something to tell you opinion is the cheapest commodity in the market even a madman has one for you so don't live your life based on what they say or what they will say because whether you are doing well or you are doing bad people must say something so don't live your life that way what matters is what god is saying about you and what you are saying about yourself that's all that matters every other thing is second class rise up to your feet rise up to your feet 
You've seen all the class of the virtues of, 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 of God upon your life. I want you to open your mouth right now and begin to ask the Lord. Say, Father, induce me with your grace and virtue. In the name of Jesus. Induce me, O Lord. Induce me, O Lord. Grant me, O Lord, the access of great greatness. Open your mouth and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. And let the divine nature of God take over in you. Declare over your life in the name of Jesus. An open mouth is an open destiny. Open your mouth and pray that as you leave this place today, you will practically live a life of the nature of Christ inside of you. You will live a life is, that is worthy. That is worthy of emulation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. So shall it be in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Somebody who say, believe in Amen. Jam those hands together to the Lord as you take your seats.